There are hundreds of comic book characters you've never heard of, and for good reason, too. Some are incredibly racist, misogynist, or culturally offensive. In the DC Universe, the Green Lanterns are members of an outer space police force who are armed with power rings that can turn their thoughts and willpower into solid objects made of light. With a roster that numbers over 7,200, there are plenty of weird ones, but none of them have been as troubling as Aresia. In her first appearance, Aresia is a young teenager. After she gets assigned to Earth, her crush on Hal Jordan leads her to subconsciously use the ring to reshape herself into a sexy adult body with a revealing costume. Once that was done, she was free to act on her crush, and while Hal was initially surprised, the two wound up dating for a few years and even living together. There have been plenty of hasty retcons about how she's much older in Earth years, but a teenager from outer space is still a teenager. The one thing you have to give the new Guardians is that it meant well. Unfortunately, its attempts at creating the diverse cast and dealing with the real-world issues of 1988 went bad more often than not, leading to regrettable characters like Extraño and Snowflame, the villain who worshipped cocaine. But while Extraño has been redeemed by later portrayals, and Snowflame has garnered his own sort of fan base by being one of the most insane concepts ever printed in comics, nobody's in a hurry to bring back the Hemogoblin, the AIDS vampire. His one and only appearance was New Guardians No. 1, but it's one more than anyone ever wanted. In that issue, it was revealed that a white supremacist organization had created a racist vampire to fight minority heroes. The good guys were able to win by beating him to a pulp, but then it was revealed that he had AIDS, and his accelerated vampire metabolism had caused him to die of the disease by the time he was taken to a hospital. The worst part? In the fight against the heroes, he managed to infect two of them with the disease. At the time, even getting a mention of AIDS in a superhero comic was groundbreaking, but characterizing it as a disease spread by a blood-sucking Nazi vampire who infected the book's extremely flamboyant gay character was maybe not the best idea. It's usually pretty easy to draw a distinction between characters who are inappropriate by accident and those who most definitely cross a line on purpose. But we have to give special mention to Boino Excelente, who fights evil with the power of perversion. This guy is the definition of inappropriate. He's a member of Section 8, a team put together by an alcoholic would-be superhero named Sixpack, whose members included weirdos like the Defenestrator, a Schwarzenegger-esque tough guy who carried around a window that he could throw people through, and Dog Welder, who, well, the name says it all in that one. He welded dogs to people. Look, it's a really weird comic. Even among them, however, Bueno Excelente stands out. His only power, such as it is, is to sexually assault other men, including a heavily implied encounter with Green Lantern. Amazingly, he's the only member of Section 8, besides Sixpack, to survive a battle that wiped out the rest of the team, but his appearances are thankfully few and far between. Considering that he's a walking sexual assault joke, that's definitely for the best. Jam is the single worst character to come out of DC's 1993 Bloodlines event, and that's saying something. The story ran through 27 different comics, with the idea being that every book would introduce a brand new superhero to the DC Universe. There were a couple of notable exceptions, but the vast majority of the characters were along the lines of Gunfire, the man who can turn anything into a gun. Jam appeared in Legion of Superheroes, where he literally crawled out of the garbage can to get the power to make anyone do anything he told them to. He was portrayed as an idiotic skater dude who leaned on catchphrases like calling things prodigious. The only saving grace is that everyone else in the comic found him as annoying as the readers did, making it pretty clear that we were supposed to hate this guy. Not that hating him was difficult. After ordering the Legion to take him to the 31st century, he tested out his powers by ordering women to take off all their clothes. That only stopped when he tried it on a robotic duplicate of Marie Antoinette, who was unaffected and slapped him instead. Fortunately, he only made a couple of appearances, but if you're looking for him, you should probably check out that garbage can. It's where he belongs. Most inappropriate characters don't last long before someone realizes that having a sex-obsessed mind-control teen or a cocaine-powered superhuman is a bad idea. Star Fox, on the other hand, has hung around for a full five decades, and he's even been an Avenger. On his native Titan, Star Fox is known as Eros, and as his name implies, he has the power to induce a euphoric state of pleasure in anyone around him, making them regard him as their closest friend with benefits. There are, of course, exceptions to this. He once tried to overwhelm a rampaging Hulk in waves of pleasure and got punched into next week. But since he can't turn it off, he's basically just a walking thirst trap who frequently indulges in the results. The implications of this aren't even subtext, either. In a 2005 story in She-Hulk, Star Fox was actually put on trial for multiple cases of sexual assault, 
and the only defense was that the women he'd slept with had wanted to. The trial never finished, and Star Fox was taken back to Titan. But considering that his own defense attorney wound up punting him right in the old moons of Saturn after realizing he'd used his powers on her back when they were both Avengers, it definitely wasn't going well. Oh, and also, he's Thanos' brother, meaning that the mad titan who once killed half the universe is actually not the worst member of the family. 